Dr. David Ho, a pioneer in anti-AIDS cocktail therapy, is now looking for new ways to attack HIV by studying people who have resisted infection. I think we, we have uh, learned in science that by studying outliers, the extreme result here and there, you could really learn a great deal about what is happening in the normal situation. Ho took cells from Steve Crohn's blood and flooded them with HIV in test tubes. He and one other person turned out to have cells that were resistant to HIV infection, while the cells of others were readily susceptible to HIV infection in the test tube. And initially, we thought that was a, a mistake in, in experimentation. But upon repeated testing, it, it gave us the consistent result that their cells were resistant to the prevalent strains of uh, HIV-1. If Ho could figure out why Steve Crone was immune to HIV, the potential was obvious. A way to protect millions of people against AIDS. HIV infects the immune system by binding to protein receptors on the surface of CD4 helper cells. One type of receptor was identified, but it was not enough. Binding to this receptor alone would not allow HIV to penetrate the cell. Perhaps a second receptor was needed, but it would take more than 10 years for scientists to find it. When they finally did, in an explosion of discovery, five different labs, including David Ho's group in New York, announced they had isolated the second receptor for HIV, called CCR5. For HIV to penetrate into a cell, it, it needs to have a dual docking uh, mechanism at the, at the surface of the cell. So HIV uh, will use its own protein, the outer protein, to bind to two different cellular molecules. And HIV will bind to CD4 first, it then changes its structure after binding to CD4, and therefore the new structure would then bind to CCR5, and that would cause the two membranes to fuse, and then HIV then enters the cell. Since the CCR5 receptor is a protein, and proteins are produced by genes, the next question was whether there might be a genetic reason why some people did not get infected by HIV. The role of genes in the AIDS epidemic is the focus of the Laboratory of Genomic Diversity at the National Cancer Institute. Human genetics is traditionally thought to involve uh, hereditary diseases that we inherit from our parents, but there's something of the order of two or three million genetic differences between every individual of the human race and those differences affect a lot more than hereditary diseases. They also affect our appearance, our behavior, uh, our immune response, uh, how quickly our hair goes gray, whether it falls out, and how fat we get. And one of the things it also affects is the heterogeneity uh, in the context of how we respond to pathogenic or fatal infectious diseases. O'Brien's lab had been collecting blood samples for over 10 years, looking for some genetic pattern in the way people respond to AIDS. Finally, one of those samples revealed an amazing secret. Some people who'd been exposed to HIV but were not infected were missing the gene responsible for the CCR5 receptor. Without that gene, they produced a defective form of CCR5 that never got expressed on the surface of their immune cells. If you don't make a proper CCR5 gene, there is no CCR5 produced on the surface of his T cells or macrophages. And if that happens when they're exposed to HIV, it simply doesn't get in because the door's shut. They absolutely require the CCR5 molecule in order to enter these cells. One of the first samples with the missing CCR5 gene came from Steve Crone. So for me, it's like a key. The virus comes with this. If you're looking for a two-hole keyhole, I don't have one of the holes, period. It's never going to attach to me. 
Steve Crone's natural immunity to HIV is rare, but it has been found in other people. And that really it was a natural genetic solution to a fatal retroviral disease. And it was even more alluring because it turned out that patients who had two copies of this variant allele, those that were resistant to infection, were actually quite healthy. They, many of them had no immunological disease or any problems associated with this genetic variant. In fact, this genetic variant wasn't a disease, it was a benefit. The fact that some individuals could live without CCR5 suggests that that particular uh, molecule is a good target since it's dispensable. And so we could develop drugs that would attack CCR5 without the fear that it was absolutely essential for some uh, for survival of that host. The grand but so far elusive payoff of the CCR5 discovery would be an AIDS vaccine. We don't know precisely how to use the new understanding to apply to vaccine development today. But as you could see, vaccine development is, is generally aimed at protecting the cell from becoming infected or generally protecting the individual from becoming infected. And something that works at the surface in preventing HIV to penetrate into the cell would be crucial. And this knowledge um, is an important part of that, but how to exploit it is currently unclear.